If you're a value investor or somebody who wants to make continuous gains from their investments, knowing about and understanding what the dividend yield is, is essential. Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. And in this video, we're going to be talking about what the dividend yield is, what constitutes a good dividend yield and how you can use it when analysing stocks. As always, if you like content like this and want to learn more about the stock market and how you can grow your money through investment, consider subscribing to the channel and put the notifications bell on so you never miss an upload. If you're not too sure what a dividend is, go back and watch my last video where I discuss it in detail, then come back to this one so you gain a full understanding. But just a real quick definition, a dividend is essentially just a payment from a company to its shareholders. So the dividend yield is a relationship between a stock's annual dividend payout, so if a company pays its dividends quarterly, you need to multiply it by four, and its current stock price. It therefore shows how much a company pays out to its shareholders relative to its stock price. Essentially what this means is it shows how much of a dividend we as the investor receive relative to how much a share costs. So in other words, it shows how much money we get back for how much we have had to put in. The dividend yield is expressed as a percentage and you can calculate it by dividing the annual dividend by the current stock price and then multiplying by 100. Let's give an example. Say we have two companies, Stark PLC and Hood PLC. Let's then say that Stark PLC pays a quarterly dividend of 50 cents, making its annual dividend $2, and that it has a stock price of $100. So if we calculate Stark PLC's dividend yield by dividing its annual dividend by the stock price, we find that it has a yield of 2%, which means that you're going to get 2% of your investment paid back to you in dividends annually. Now Hood PLC also pays an annual dividend of $2, but its stock price is $40. Therefore, by using the same calculation as before, we find that its dividend yield is 5% meaning that you're getting 5% of your investment paid back to you in the form of a dividend annually. Obviously, if you're picking between these two stocks, you're going to end up choosing Hood PLC because you're getting more for your money. And in general, a higher dividend yield is better. However, as is the case with all financial instruments, it's just not quite as straightforward as that. You see, a company with a higher dividend yield may actually be failing, and as a result, the share price is dropping. What this is doing is it's increasing the dividend yield of that company because the stock price has decreased. This is best illustrated by looking back at the formula. If the annual dividend remains constant but the stock price decreases, that particular company's dividend yield will increase, which based off the last example, you would think is a good indication. But this can actually be a trap for investors and so it's very important never to base your investment purely off the dividend yield. It's also very bad practice to base anything, let alone an investment, off of one indication. So, you know, don't do it. The best way of determining if a company's dividend yield is good is to look into the history of that company. If it has a strong record of constant or continuously increasing dividend payments over a number of years, this would indicate that its dividend yield is probably quite sound. What looking into the history of a company also allows is the ability to understand how a company pays its dividends. And what I mean by this is how often, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, you know, stuff like that. And you can use this information to determine what a company's forward 12 month dividend yield will be. That is, the dividend yield the company will have over the following 12 months. On top of that, keep in mind that stock prices fluctuate all the time. And so with that, the dividend yield changes as well. Now here is how you can actually use the dividend yield to determine if a stock is overvalued or undervalued. In essence, if a stock's current dividend yield is greater than its five-year average dividend yield, that is the average dividend yield that the company had over the past five years, the stock is most likely undervalued. Let me explain why. Now just a heads up, this may be slightly complicated, but I'm really going to try my best to explain it well. By rearranging the previous formula, we can calculate the fair value price of a stock, which is just the annual dividend divided by the five-year average dividend yield and multiplying by 100. Let's look at an example. If we look at Snow PLC, which has a 5 year average dividend yield of 2% and its current annual dividend is $2, we can conclude that its share price should be $100. Let's say that its current dividend yield is 3%, doing the same calculation but replacing the 5 year average dividend yield with the current one, we can see that the share price should now be $66.67. 
If we then compare that with if the current dividend yield was 1%, we would find that the dividend share price should be $200. What this shows, holding all else constant, is if the current dividend yield is greater than the 5 year average dividend yield, that company's stock is most likely undervalued, hence the lower value. And if the company's current dividend yield is lower than the 5 year average dividend yield, that company is most likely overvalued. From this, it's clear to see that the dividend yield is a measurement that investors can use to understand how much of a return they're getting on their investment. High dividend stocks can allow investors to make a very healthy amount of passive income from their stocks if the company is sound, for example a blue chip company. As always I really hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new, if you do like this sort of content please like and subscribe and if you have any videos you'd like me to discuss leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to get to them. Thanks for watching.